every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Your chances seem brighter just knowing champions are made, not born. It happens. Take Harvey Keen, top-notch shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. When Harvey was just a lad of six, he was learning baseball tricks. He trapped those grounders, learned to throw. And this is something you should know. A Wheaties breakfast helps him grow. Now Harvey sparks that tiger team, because Wheaties keep him on the beam. Harvey Keen, a Wheaties guy since he was six years old. He knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Watch Harvey chase this hot one. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way, get on your way, with Wheaties, cause champions are made not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Victor. I'll Silver. Hooray! <laughs> Judd Jackson, notorious outlaw leader, escaped from territorial prison, rejoined his gang, and took over the leadership. Judd recklessly led the gang on one holdup after another in the nearby territory. Here comes the stage now, men. Have your guns ready and let's go. Better mask your face with your handkerchief. Ah, it's too much trouble. Come on, get up! Come on. Come on. Missed no chances to add to his ill-gotten cash. I can get that ranch for half price for taking the cash with me, Jim. Yeah, I reckon that's right. But it's this you riding around with twenty thousand in cash. If somebody noticed you draw it from the bank. Well, I made sure nobody did. You see? Hey, look, I'll, 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 I'll put out and run him. Get, get there, cut out. Oh, a hit. I'll stop the team. Whoa, whoa there, whoa, whoa. Next time, mister, don't act smart and try to get away. Chief, find the cat. He has 20,000 with him. News of the gang's activities spread throughout the territory. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had been helping in the search for the escaped convict Judd Jackson, rode the trail toward Stockton. Tonto, uh, Jackson's trail headed north from the prison, according to reports. Of course, he was clever enough to cover his tracks after he'd gone some distance. It was thought he may have circled back to the south. Uh-huh. I've begun to think Jackson may be mixed up in the gang that's operating in this neighborhood. Why do you think that, Kimakari? Well, the gang didn't become active until after Jackson escaped. After he had time to reach this territory. That's right. But Jackson is with the gang. We'll kill two birds with one stone if we manage to capture them. We'll get Judge Jackson and break up the gang. Uh-huh. And we'll camp for the night near Stockton. Then make an intensive search for the nearby hills in the morning. Come on, Come on. Well. Early that evening, the outlaw Pete arrived at the hideout shack in the hills. Hi, Pete. What's new in town? Oh, nothing much. 
Folks are still talking about the gang and yapping because the sheriff hasn't caught us. Oh, that sheriff is running around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jerry. And he'd be excited more than ever if he knew I was leading the gang. Sure would. I, uh... I saw something on the way back from town that you might consider bad news, Judd. Yeah? What? I saw the masked man and Indian who turned you over to the law six months ago what? and had you sent to prison. You did? Where? Turning into a grove back in the hills. I made sure they didn't see me. I knew you'd want to know they were around. They're dangerous, Judd. We'd better lay low if they're around. Uh, lawmen don't bother me, but the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend are dangerous. They got me once, but by thunder, they aren't going to do it again. The best way to avoid having them get you again, Judd, is for us to leave here. That's yeah. right. No, doggone it. Before they have a chance to find out I'm leading this gang, I'll think of some way to get rid of them. I've heard a lot about those two. That won't be so easy, yeah. Judd. Why not? We've got the advantage right now. We know they're in this territory, but they don't realize we know they're here. If you figure on having the gang try to grab them at their camp, count me out. Yeah, me too. They're too smart to be taken by surprise. And even though it's seven to two in our favor, and those four guns they have between them shoot mighty straight and fast. Ah, you sound like a bunch of tenderfeet. How come you men are afraid when we're seven to two like Jerry said? Jerry told the two truth when he spoke of how to handle those guns of theirs, Judd. Trying to sneak up on them or to have open gun play with them is local. Sure is. Maybe we might find a way to trap them. Uh-huh. Well, give me time to think, will you? Let's see now. Uh, wait a minute. I have an idea that might work. Yeah? What? Well, Jerry here is young and kind of presentable. If he could get in with those two hombres... Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to... Be quiet a minute, will you? How can I think with you yapping for you know what it's all about? Go on, Judd. What is it all about? Well, Jerry's been showing off his trick riding around here. And this is a good chance for him to put it to use. How? Pete will tell you where the grove is that those two hombres are staying in. Now, early in the morning, before they break camp, you ride at a gallop along the trail past the grove. Pretend your horse stumbles, let out a loud yell, and fall from the saddle, make out like you're stunned. Uh, yeah, then what? The masked man and his friend will come to see what happens, see if you're hurt. Now, you sort of come through, see? So surprised about the mask. Then if they don't tell you who they are, you tell them that you've heard of a masked man, an Indian, who helped the law. Then ask him right out if he's the Lone Ranger. What's the idea? Yeah, well, listen, now, it, listen. Then Jerry will tell him that he found out where the outlaw gang is hiding and that he was going to town for the sheriff. He'll tell him where this place is. Then he'll leave, saying he'll send the sheriff to help him. You mean you want Jerry to really tell him where we are? Sure. Only we'll be waiting in ambush a quarter of a mile from here where the trail runs between two gullies. Jerry will leave as if to go for the sheriff. And then he'll take a short cut back so as to be here when we gun the Lone Ranger and the Indian. Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto were getting ready to leave their camp when they heard galloping hooves on the trail beyond the grove. Someone rides plenty fast, long trail. Yes. Sounds as though he's heading toward town. Oh. Something happened, Toto. Easy, steady, big north. Yes, come, fella. Move through there. A few moments later, the two men reined to a stop beside the fallen driver. Oh, oh, oh easy, steady, big north. He must have been broke. Appears to be stunned with a fall. My shoulder. A masked man. And an Indian. You hombres must be part of the gang. Take it easy, fellow. We're not outlaws. But that mask. Hey, wait a minute. I've heard of a masked man and an Indian that helped the law. Are you the Lone Ranger? That's right. I'm sure glad you found me, mister. Are you hurt? No, no. I'll, I'll be all right. Hey. See, I'm able to stand. My horse stumbled and threw me before I knew what was happening. You were riding very fast. The trail is rough along here. Isn't that right? Let me go get the horse. You uh, feel all right now? Oh, sure. I want to get to town in a hurry to see the sheriff. Oh, what's wrong? It's about that gang I mentioned. 
I found out where they have their hideout. Uh, did they see you? No, I, I managed to keep out of sight. What were you doing in the hills so early in the morning? Well, I, I live back that way. I, I was going to town early today on business. Well, my name's Jerry. Jerry Sparks. Thanks for coming to help me. That's all right, Jerry. Now, about the outlaw gang. Hey, I reckon you came here to help search for them, didn't you? Yes. I'd like to know where that hideout is located. Oh, oh, uh, here, young fellow's born. Oh, thanks, Indian. Now, about the outlaw's hideout. I'll tell you how to get there, mister. Then I'll go on to town and tell the sheriff so he'll bring his men out to help you round them up. That's a good idea. How do we find the hideout? Jerry gave brief but clear directions concerning the way to the hideout. Then finished by saying... I'm sure you'll be able to find it, mister. But you better not go too close till the sheriff and his men come to help you. We'll be careful. Thanks for the information, Jerry. Oh, that's all right. Now I'll go on to town. I'll tell the sheriff you'll be waiting for him. Easy now. So long. Adios. Get it. Get it. That's good. Now we follow trail to hideout. When sheriff comes, we catch Yang. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. Mm. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue... The Lone Ranger stood watching as Jerry rode away in the direction of town. For a moment, he didn't reply to Toto's remark. Then he said, There's something about that fellow that doesn't ring true, Toto. Huh? Why do you say that? I noticed first that he complained of his shoulder. There was no dirt on his shoulder. There was on both his hands. Mm, not savvy. Well, if he'd landed on his shoulder, dirt would have been ground into his coat. I've seen many trick riders pretend to fall from a horse. They use their hands to break their fall. That's right. I also noticed the tracks of his horse. There's no indication of a stumble. Here, look for yourself. That's right. If horse stumble, who makes scuff marks? His horse, not stumble. I think the gang's hideout would be guarded. No one could get close enough to observe them without being seen. That's right. I'm not think of that. And what we do... Instead of following the young fellow's directions, we'll trail him and see if he does go to town. He's caught easy for us. Move through there. Come up to town. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode down the trail until they came to a turnoff on which they saw Jerry's track. He turned here, Toto. The narrow trail runs back around the other side of the hill. Ah, that take him in direction him come from. It may be shortcut to hide out. Yeah, we'll find out. Hmm. On second thought, you better go on to town and bring the sheriff, Toto. Identify yourself. I'm sure he'll remember you. Uh-huh. Bring the uh, sheriff and his men by the turnoff trail. I'll go ahead and try to locate the hideout. You be careful, Kimasabi. Of course. I suspect an ambush was planned, so I'll be very cautious. Hurry, Toto. Ah. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Jerry rode hurriedly back along the shortcut trail, which led to the rear of the hideout shack. He didn't stop at the shack, but rode past it 
and continue to the gully where Judd was waiting to ambush the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Oh, ho there, ho, ho. Well, how's the makeup? Judd, it worked. Everything went as smooth as could be. I'm sort of surprised an armory who's supposed to be as smart as a masked man would fall for the plan. Oh, why shouldn't he? I did it just the way Judd told me to. That fall I took would look plenty real to anybody. Tell me exactly what happened. Jerry quickly told what had taken place and of his conversation with the Lone Ranger. When he finished, Judd said, And they're on the way here now, is that it? Yeah, Judd. They're coming along the trail I took to reach the camp. The one that comes along here between the gullies. <laughs> they think I went to town to get the sheriff and his <laughs> men. <laughs> yeah, they won't live to know whether the sheriff got here or not. You're right, Pete. Now, Jerry, you go across to the other gully with Jim and Sam. The masked man and Indian won't suspect a thing till they're between our crossfire. And then it'll be too late. The Lone Ranger approached the rear of the shack not long after Jerry had passed it. He dismounted under cover of the trees. Those are foes, easy. Did it be close? Holding his guns ready for instant use, the masked man cautiously made his way toward the building through the thick, tall brush. He soon realized the place was deserted. Then he noticed the fresh hoof marks leading from the front of the shack and went forward on foot through the woods bordering the trail. He had gone almost a quarter of a mile when he heard a low whinny out toward the trail. The masked man stood on a wooded slope and looked sharply down the short distance to the trail. It was then he saw the tips of a horse's ears in a gully, and he noticed there were gullies on each side of the trail. At that moment, the top of a man's hat appeared for an instant above the brush across the road. Instantly, Judge Jackson's plan was evident, to have gunmen waiting in both gullies, which paralleled the trail, so that anyone riding that way would be a target for bullets from both sides. If the sheriff and posse come along that trail, they'll be trapped. I'll go back to warn them. As the masked man started back, he tripped over a fallen log and stumbled into view of the outlaws. Judd and his men heard the sound and looked up the slope as the masked man jumped to his feet and gained the protection of a big tree. Judd shouted, Hey, everybody! The masked man is a short way up the slope. If you must be there, too, we'll move up on him. Wait up! Stay behind the tree. The long range is a dead shot. You may cross the trail. Come on! Don't get that masked man! The men who waited in the gully beyond quickly crossed the trail and joined the rest of the gang. The gunmen formed a semicircle as they gradually moved from tree to tree toward the Lone Ranger, firing as they moved. returned the outlaw's fire and had the satisfaction of knowing his bullets had hit at least two of them. While he realized he was in danger of being encircled, he couldn't leave the big oak as the nearest tree to it was too far away to be reached in safety. Have to make sure no one gets behind me. While his men kept up a continuous fire, Judd watched his chance, then crawled through the brush in an effort to get behind the last man. I'll get him now. Soon, the big outlaw reached a position up the slope where the Lone Ranger's back was in plain view. Yeah. But before the outlaw could pull the trigger... Look out, Kilo, Tommy! Oh, my leg! At that oh. moment, the sheriff and posse oh. rounded a bend in the trail. Oh. The outlaws turned their attention to the oncoming riders, giving Tonto a chance to take Judd Jackson's gun and reach the masked man's side. We come to hide out with posse. I'm Silver, here, Sean. We know you in danger. We ride ahead, fast. Lucky you did come on ahead, Tonto. Use your gun. The sheriff and his posse gallop into the gunfight, firing as they rode. For a few moments, the outlaws battled furiously. But cut off from their horses and without their leader, those who were not wounded dropped their guns and surrendered. You all right, mister? Yes, sir. But for a few moments, I thought I'd really be trapped. Tonto arrived in time to keep me from getting shot in the back. Well, when we reached the hideout and Tonto discovered you went ahead on foot, then we heard the shooting. Taking your horse with him, Tonto lit out ahead of us, lickety-split. 
We followed along the trail. And there were outlaws on both sides of the trail, waiting to ambush anyone who came along. I reconnoitered through the woods here on the slope and discovered the plan. The way, it's fortunate they spotted me. Brought them from the gullies and away from their horses. You sure we're putting up a good one-man fight against plenty of odds, mister? Oh, thanks, Sheriff. There's the fellow who tried to send us into a trap. Man, bring those prisoners here. Right. Get over oh, there. Don't me. That's the man. Said his name is Jerry Sparks. So you try to get the mass man an Indian murdered, huh? Now, look, Sheriff, it wasn't my idea. It was Judge Jackson. Shut up, Jerry. Yeah. So that hombre lying there near the cottonwood is Judge Jackson, huh? He fits the general description, though he's clean-shaven and now has black hair. I had an idea Jackson was working with this gang. He'll have plenty more charges against him when he goes back to prison. I could have plugged that masked man if the Indian hadn't interfered. Yes, I have my friend Toller to thank for stopping you. Good thing you were smart enough to figure they'd wait in ambush. We'll tie him and get him to jail where they'll do no more harm. Good. Uh, Toller, where are the horses? Them back in trees. Uh, we leave now. See you again, Sheriff. Adios. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, darn it, Jerry. You didn't convince him after all. If you had, he wouldn't have followed your tracks. He'd have come by the main trail like a thief. Oh, shut up. I didn't want to go in the first place, but you thought you knew it all. You and your big plan. <laughs> Don't worry. Judge Jackson and all of you, for that matter, will have plenty of time to make all the plans you want after you get to prison. Lots of smart alley crooks have tried to pull the same sort of trick on those two hombres. But let me tell you, it's no use trying to outsmart the Lone Ranger. No, sir. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.